Hi, and welcome to lesson 3.1. We're starting chapter three today, and we are going to first learn about different types of pairs of lines and angles and how they relate to each other and how to identify them. Okay, so first things first, the definition of parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that are coplanar and do not intersect. So coplanar means that they lie in the same plane. So for example, line TU and line RQ are coplanar. They lie in this same plane right here and they do not intersect each other. So therefore they are parallel. Okay, so skew lines are kind of similar to parallel lines and the fact that they do not intersect, but they're slightly different in that they are not coplanar. So they don't lie in the same plane. Coplanar, same plane, Not coplanar means not the same plane. So for example, we've got this line SV. It's coming out of the plane, it intersects the plane right here at this point, pierces through it, and continues on. Line SV is skew to both lines RQ and TU. It's never going to intersect those two lines, and it's not in the same plane. So skew lines, are very similar, like I said, to parallel lines in that they do not intersect, but the main difference is that they are not coplanar. They do not lie in the same plane, whereas parallel lines will always lie in the same plane, and also they do not intersect. Okay, so moving on, we've got a few postulates that we're going to learn about. The first one is the parallel postulate, and this states that if there is a line and a point not on that line, then there is exactly one line through that point that will be parallel to the given line. Okay, that's a lot of words. What exactly does that mean? So we've got a line right here. We've got point T that is clearly not on this line. It does not lie on this line. What they're saying with the parallel postulate is there is one line, only one line, and it's this line right here, that goes through the point, through point T, that will not intersect this line that is parallel. And if we were to rotate this line around and see, we can see any other line that we rotate around is going to intersect this line down here. So there's only one line that can go through a given point that will be parallel to another line. Similarly, we have the perpendicular postulate very similar to the parallel postulate. It says, again, if there is a line and a point not on that line, then there's exactly one line through the point that is going to be perpendicular to that given line. Okay, so we've got our line. We've got a point that's not on this line. There's only one line right here that is going to be perpendicular through this point and, and perpendicular to this line. And we can see too, I'm gonna to go ahead and clear that off. If we rotate this line around, there's only one line that can go through this point. So that will be perpendicular to the other line. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, we are going to learn about different types of angles and how they relate to each other and specifically what are their names. So we've got what's called a transversal. Transversal is any line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. So we've got two lines right here, the green lines that are already up here. And we've got this brown line right here that's intersecting the two green lines at different places. It intersects this line down here and this green line up here. This brown line is called a transversal. So we're going to learn a lot about these different angles that we've got labeled here and what type of angles they are. So the first group of angles are called corresponding angles. These are angles that have the same position, but they're on the different lines. So for example, if we were to take a look at angle one right here, its corresponding angle 
we're going to look at the line down here and find the same position. So we see that this is in the upper left-hand corner of the four angles here. So angle 5 down here, that would be in the same exact position as angle 1, but on this line, on the second line. So angle 1 and angle 5 would be considered to be corresponding angles. So the, that would be a pair of corresponding angles, angle 1 and angle 5. So if we were to see angle 2 right here, and I'm circling that with the white pen, this is in your upper right-hand corner of the four angles that we have made with this transversal and this line. So the upper right-hand corner of these four angles, this intersection, would be angle 6. So angle 2 and angle 6 would be a pair of corresponding angles. We're going to take a look down here. We've got angle 3, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. The angle that's corresponding with that, the corresponding angle to angle 3 would be angle 7. So now we have angle 3 and angle 7. And then lastly, we've got angle 4 and angle 8. That would be our last corresponding angle pair. Angle 4 and angle 8. So those are our four different pairs of corresponding angles that we have with these, this transversal intersecting the two lines. Okay, so now we're going to learn about another type of angle, alternate interior angles. For alternate interior angles, the definition says that these are angles that lie between the two lines and are on opposite sides of the transversal. So we are only looking at angles that lie between the two lines. So these are the only angles that we're looking at for alternate interior angles. And they have to lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So our first pair of alternate interior angles would be angle 3 and angle 6. These are on opposite sides of our transversal, our brown line here, and they lie in between the two lines that the transversal intersects. So angle 3 and angle 6 would be alternate interior angles. Additionally, if we look at angle 4 and angle 5, they are on opposite sides of our transversal, different sides, so they are not on the same side. We have to cross over the line to get to angle 5, and they're in between the two lines that the transversal intersects. So angle 4 and angle 5 would be alternate interior angles. Okay, next type of angles that we have, alternate exterior angles. So these are similar to interior angles in that they lie on the opposite sides of the transversal, but they are on the outside of the two lines. So our angles here that we're going to be looking at are angles 1 and 2 and 7 and 8. So they have to be on the outside of the lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. And on top of that, they cannot lie on the same line. So angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate interior, exterior angles. Sorry, angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles. Also, we have angle 2 and angle 7. That would be our other pair. of alternate exterior angles. They lie on the outside of the two lines and they are on opposite sides. So they both have to be on the outside, they cannot be on the same line. All right, last type of line that we've got, or angles that we've got going here, consecutive interior angles. Okay, so consecutive interior angles lie in between the two lines. So they're like interior angles up here that lie between the two lines, and you'll see that they both have interior in common, but they are on the same side of the transversal. So again, interior means that we're looking at these four angles. Specifically though, they lie on the same side here. So angle three and angle five would be consecutive interior angles. And then we also have angle 4 
and angle six. That would be our other pair. Okay, so that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and have a good one. Take care, bye-bye.